Everybody, it's Tyler here at IRI checking in with rookie team 93-12 Nerd Spark coming in from Michigan. Uh, division champions this year as well, too. What a phenomenal season, a great way to kick off their first year here in FRC. Take a look at 93-12, what they have to offer here. I love this overall structure. We're going to be talking about a lot of the mechanical aspects, the slide that they have with the uh, articulating wrist uh, and articulating uh, movement that they have as well. Really super cool stuff. And some really neat software things to go into, what they've been doing with the time of flight sensor uh, and all the different positional controls. Let's learn more about their rookie sensation. Nurse Bar coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. Head on over to SolidWorks.com slash sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Bryson, let's talk about the mechanical aspects of this robot. Uh, you know, coming as a rookie team, I would think this robot is, is something of a, a huge veteran team. I think you've done a fantastic job with it. So tell me about some of the features, capabilities, especially with the arm structure. So thank you for the comments. Um, so we started off with some Swerve Pod Mark IV eyes on our chassis, and those are our drivetrain. We have four of them running at the same time on Falcon 500s. So that gives us the speed we need to do everything we can. We have our upper stage, our chassis was designed in two parts, so we have our chassis itself, which is two plates stuck together with the swerve pods on them and all of our electronics underneath. Um, and then we have our top plate, which holds all the tooling, and we have our slider and our bucket up top. So our bucket comes out so that when we're at the single station, we can intake cones. It'll open up like this, and then we throw the cone in through the single station. It'll close. And then our grippers will close, which are in two 550s up top. And then we have a rotating wrist, which is a 550 on a gearbox, runs down our arm through belts, and comes up and lets us rotate this wrist. Um, our next point of articulation would be our pivot right here, which lets the arm go up and come out during tally up and auto. So this lets us place mid on its own and then we can use our slider here if it'll go out yep and then that lets us get the extra little bit of reach we need to reach the high goal talking about you know concept wise how you looked at packing this because you have quite a few degrees of freedom uh on something like this so when you were looking at approaching this year's game what made you want to go with uh something that has uh, so many different variables to it so most of it was that during kickoff we decided that the single station would be the best for us because not many teams would use it turned out to be not quite as true later on. Um, so we designed the funnel based on that, and then the funnel led to the design choices of our arm, which went through a number of iterations. We decided to use belts instead of just straight from a gearbox all the way up. So these belts let us do the same gear reduction without quite as much, uh, without quite as much backlash from the gearbox. Uh, and then we had to add a second chain so our chains were loose because it wasn't originally designed for chains. So we have a chain that's loose on top and tight on top, and then one that's or loose on top for one, tight on top for another. And that kind of acts as one solid chain that holds it all together. Jaden, let's talk about some positional control on your robot. I'd love to see this arm in action. So talk about what you've done from PID side, uh, and then let's show off uh, how this robot's actually moving too. So we have various set positions. So we have home right now. So. When the cone is slid in, it's gripped, and then when they're ready to place, oh. so that's how it grips, and then when the drivers are ready to place the cone, they can either go to mid, and then, or they can go to high, and it's not quite gonna be reaching the pole, so, what they can do is they can adjust the position of the wrist on the fly, or they can adjust the position of the arm to place it, and then they go back, and that's about it. So you, get, you are all using uh, two different programming languages you're telling me about head time. What made you want to go with two different ones, or, or I guess where in particular does each one impact the robot? So. Both the programming languages implement the same stuff for the most part. 
but we have two sides of the team, Albion and Canton. So the Canton side started with Java, and the Albion side started with LabVIEW. So we both independently developed the same program, pretty much, and we bounced some ideas off each other. Um, one of the big things we did, as he said, we're um, an hour away, so we would trade, he would set ideas back and forth, and so when I, or the LabVIEW side, would get like different gains, we finished the gains for the arms, which took us multiple days to tune. Then we were able to give those gains directly to the Java side, and they did not have to do any of the tuning, which also lessened our breaking of the robot, because we broke some belts while we were tuning, and Java did not have to do that, because they got our gains. And Paige, talk to me about the uh, time of flight sensor you're using. I think you're using the plane with Fusion One, it looks like, on there. So talk about your experience and your how it's worked out for your team. Yeah, so the time of flight sensor we have is inside the wrist here. And this bucket was designed specifically for cones. We thought that other teams would um, go for cubes because cubes was uh, kind of an easier design, but it turns out that just as many people went for cones as they did cubes. So we realized we needed a way to really iterate um, us picking up a cube. And so to do that, we implemented this time of flight sensor. And so this is our cube setting, which is slightly above uh, the thing. So when Bryson, the human player, drops it into the, um, drops it down the single station, it senses that the cube is there so that it grips the cube every time instead of our driver having to guess where the cube falls. So that has really helped us uh, be able to pick up cubes and it's made it a lot easier to do both. Paige, last thing I want to ask you is, uh, as a rookie team coming in, what advice do you have for rookies coming in for the next season in Crescendo? Uh, what is something that you thought really put your team over the top? Um, anything is possible. I've learned that uh, definitely hard work and determination and teamwork can get you a long way. Um, try to think of every possible outcome because things will happen that you don't expect and if you have a backup plan, even if it's crazy, it really helps out. Well, Nerds Park, congratulations on a phenomenal season. We can't wait to see what you bring in future seasons. Well, and of course, good luck here at IRI. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. Head on over to SOLIDWORKS.com sponsorships to choose from desktop, cloud apps, or both to design your robot. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.